Well, the United Nations has some 100,000 peacekeepers on the ground. They're mostly in 16 developing countries in Africa and the Middle East. These missions cost about $8 billion each year. The UN peacekeeping mission in the Democratic Republic of Congo is the biggest and costliest at $1.2 billion a year. It includes 18,000 soldiers and police and 4,000 other personnel. In 2013, peacekeepers defeated the largest rebel group and are authorized to use force if necessary. UN peacekeepers as well as French and European troops were deployed in 2014 to restore order in the Central African Republic. But they have been repeatedly accused of human rights abuses, including sexually assaulting women and children. And the Regional Protection Force of nearly 14,000 peacekeepers were deployed to South Sudan shortly after it gained independence in 2011. President Salva Kiir has told the UN not to increase troops because he's concerned they will marginalize his sovereignty. Well, for more on this, let's now bring in Fred Carver to the news grid. He's head of policy at the United Nations Association, which fosters support and advocates for the UN. He's live with us from London. Very good to have you with us, Fred. Um, I want to focus with you on the peacekeeping missions in Africa and Haiti, because that's where a lot of the criticism has been. Peacekeepers sexually abusing women and minors who were deployed to protect them in the Central African Republic. The cholera uh, scandal in Haiti. Many people say that these failures have outweighed the successes of these missions. What, what do you say to that? I mean, I think it's very clear that peacekeeping needs reform in a number of ways. And I think sexual exploitation and abuse is one of the most clear cut of those. This is a problem which the UN has taken far too long to come to grips with. We've had... Um, a reform process with respect to allegations of sexual exploitation and abuse which has run for for over 20 years now and yet we still don't seem to be coming to grips with the problem uh, and we have a particular view about that which is that actually the UN system particularly recently and arguably far too late has come up with some very good systemic solutions but it's fundamentally very difficult to stop allegations of right. uh, to stop sexual abuse from taking place when you have this this fundamental problem of impunity where you have no criminal process mm. and so we are pushing for there to be a criminal uh, element, a criminal prosecutorial element to any kind of reform agenda. Mm. But that said, I think we, sh we must be clear that peacekeeping still does have a value and that many of these countries, uh, you know, would be in a far worse situation if it wasn't for peacekeeping. And there's, there's, there's a clear and urgent need to reform peacekeeping. But the one thing you would actually say about peacekeeping is it is good value for money. Okay. So I but think even... the money element is actually one of the... One of, Sorry. Sorry to interrupt you, Fred, because you talked about the success, the success yeah. and that we need to look at the successes. But, you know, even after peacekeeping's biggest failures in Rwanda and Somalia and Bosnia, when the mandates then, then didn't uh, include the goal of protecting civilians, we're still seeing some of those same mistakes in South Sudan, for instance, where peacekeepers were unable to protect civilians who'd taken shelter in a UN base. Yes, and that's one of the areas which does need uh, to be looked at, this idea of uh, robust mandates, which we now have, but those mandates being implemented correctly and having the right troops to implement those mandates. And I think there is a case to be said that peacekeeping could be better achieved by fewer but better trained troops. But as I say, these, these are legitimate questions to ask, and we need to ask searching questions uh, to better peacekeeping. But uh, financially, peacekeeping does provide very good value for money. Okay, thank you very much for sharing your views with us. Uh, Fred Carver, Head of Policy at the UN Association, joining us from London. Now, I want to